you know, Cardano is the first infrastructure out there that I see has potential to be capable to support like large scale decentralized AI, AI, AI systems. And that, yeah. That, so, that's so before exciting. we jump into like, what is singularity net? What is that potential that you see with Cardano? Well, really, you know, when, when I, I published a book in 2001 called Creating Internet Intelligence, and what, what I was aiming at there was a whole bunch of different AI processes living all around, all around the globe and cooperating in a decentralized democratic way to do complex computations in a sort of self-organized way rather than a top-down way. And, you know, when Vitalik uh, talked about the world computer around the, the time when Ethereum was first being conceived, like 2015 or whatever, 2014, whatever it was, I mean, it was really a similar idea and smart contracts were supposed to support that. Now, I didn't manage to launch anything like that in 2001. Mm -hmm. Ethereum launched something, but it really doesn't have the sophistication or scalability of design to support that vision although it's very cool what it, what it has led to of course it's yeah. changed the world and i think cardano with the plutus smart contracts being released is a much more credible infrastructure for a world computer right and you can you can uh, secure scalable privacy preserving like decentralized democratically governed world computer and you can you can do a lot of things with such a world computer and AI, AI obviously is, is, is the one that I'm thinking most about, but there, there's a lot of other large scale decentralized software applications that, that, that you can make. Yeah. Yeah. So, so essentially what you're excited for is, is the fact that Cardano has this decentralized governance and that's kind of at the heart of it with Cardano's Voltaire and then also the scalability, you know, um, that's coming well, in the future so with Basho. I started programming Haskell in 1993 when it was like the gopher interpreter before GHC and all the modern Haskell tools. So, and both because I'm a mathematician and that's sort of a beautiful abstract way to organize code and, and ideas. And, but also, I mean, you have provability and, and verifiability of code enabled sort of, very effectively by by design and that that just seemed like a good thing like i i mean i'd been thinking about that originally from a strong ai view like if if you have an ai system that has a certain goal system and a certain ethical orientation in it wouldn't it be nice to prove formally that the ai code actually has the goal system you you think it has you intended right? yeah 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 but of, of course for less high polluting things than, than the goal system of your superhuman AGI. I mean, just for, for financial transactions or medical records, I mean, having, having verifiability that, that code is operating according to spec is very nice thing. And, you know, pure functional languages make that just far simpler to do by, by design. So I, when I was into that since for, forever, right? Probably since before Hoskinson was born, for that matter. <laughs> and then, I, I, I mean, so, I mean, now that the fact that that uh, Cardano has has come out with a smart contract language that basically is, is Haskell plus some cool li libraries and, and extensions, I think that's uh, that's extremely promising for reasons that are going to be obvious to everyone who's deep in the functional programming community and maybe maybe not obvious to to everybody else right so i mean as i mean the the obvious example is like i mean or or a boros is formally verified and i mean you can you can formally verify that the code sending trillions of dollars around in the world economy actually is doing what it what it says it's doing mm -hmm. There's yeah, I think that is a hard thing for for a lot of people to understand. You know, you, you kind of have to have that mindset because you know a, a lot of us have heard from Charles like, oh, form, formal verification is the way to go. But I'm um, actually seeing you come into the space and actually seeing the value in that as well. With with all of the the history you've had, you know, is is, is nice to see from from our side as well. You know, because it's it's hard for people that aren't technical minded to really see the the true value of formal verification. You know. Well, unless you've programmed a lot, you don't realize like almost all code has many bugs in it, right? And then 
I mean, a good hacker can find those bugs. And it's really insane that the tens of trillions of dollars coursing around the globe in the world economy are running on fundamentally insecure software code, right? I mean, that, that's that's ridiculous. And yeah. in traditional finance, you have some parties, like say J- Jane Street Capital has been a pioneer. They're like, like hedge funds running on, on functional code, Haskell and OCaml and so on. But by and, la- by and large, security is addressed by brute force mechanisms rather than just by security by design, by using programming languages that are not bug prone and formally like proving with math that that the code does what it, what it's supposed to do and yeah this this is going to be really important as we get more and more advanced ai systems but it also honestly it already is is important i mean look at all the ridiculous hacks out out, out, out there already which could be prevented by taking a, a sounder approach and I, I think there's also other technical advantages to Cardano's architecture in the form of just better code reuse. Say if for machine learning, you often want to do like secure multi-party computing. So you can you can have data owned by many different people living on many servers scattered all around the planet. And you want to do machine learning to learn what's in that data without requiring people to share the data with each other. So like you, you could have say a bunch of banks that want to do risk management analysis or a bunch of pharma companies that want to do data mining on on people's medical data but without sharing the data with each other can the ai find patterns common among all this disparate spread around data without needing to gather that data in one in one place and without violating anyone's confidentiality or privacy well i mean that's like secure multi-party computing now cardano has that like deep in the guts of the consensus mechanism the cool thing is that due to the elegant software architecture, we could reuse some of that code for secure multi-party computing to help with doing secure MPC for machine learning algorithms, right? And that's uh, that's related to how Hydra works, where you, you, you can have the smart contracts in a side chain isomorphically map into smart contracts on the main chain. You can have multi-party computing on the native asset isomorphically map into multi-party computing like in, in the main Cardano system. And the, this is all, you know, obscure technical voodoo, I guess, if you're not a functional programming developer, but it's the sort of thing that makes developing... Well, it's, a, it's a, incredible, man. It really is, you know. And it, it, lets, it makes developing a world computer just orders of magnitude easier. As So, I mean, the, the reason Singularity Net computer, the reason the Singularity Net community is psyched about moving to Cardano is just for sake of paying 25 bucks or 100 bucks in gas costs for a simple transaction and having a transaction take minutes instead of a, like a fraction of a second or something right so i mean sure. i mean they're they're just fed up with cost and scalability issues and cardano does work around cost and scalability issues but i mean the the bottom line is like nem has worked nem has been cheap and fast for years it's been around since 2015 right and the algorand is cheap is cheap and and fast l round is cheap and fast and you know i mean i don't own those tokens i'm not shilling those things right it's just the the point is there there's a there's a shitload of things that are cheaper and faster than ethereum out there and just don't have traction it's a necessary condition that cardano is cheap and fast but, but it's that, not just that, that. Alone, Mm-hmm. That it's not a sufficient condition, like to to win the blockchain competition, because if you're starting from scratch rather than having to be backward compatible, it's not that hard to be cheaper and faster than than yeah. than Ethereum, right? The 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 real win is the the Plutus smart contract framework and the other things that come with it in in Gogloom release, because I mean this this just opens up a lot of other avenues for sophisticated large-scale development of, of software systems and i think that that lets you do advanced stuff like we're doing with porting our, our singularity net decentralized ai network on the cardano but it should also let banks and pharma companies and supply chain applications and a ho- whole, whole bunch of other domains of, of complex distributed software application i mean i think the gogo release will, will allow allow these things to be rolled out on the Cardano network. And you just, you can't do that with the other blockchains out there. In Ethereum, you can't because it's too inefficient and expensive. 
in the other blockchains that are faster and and cheaper you can't do it because you don't have a sufficiently capable smart contract platform so mm-hmm. I, I mean i think cardano is in quite a unique position going forward from this next release which i agree with you there and, and i really appreciate your insight on that and um so the next thing i want to get into is specifically for someone who's who's never heard of singularity net before never heard of what you guys are doing because uh, my channel recently has been growing a lot and a lot of its new people they don't even know um you know really about even creating a wallet you know so i kind of just want a, a general overview of, of what singularity net is first and then uh, we can go into kind of your guys's proposal you know that that was voted and passed which i'm really excited yeah about. yeah sure sure and it, it's true living in around people who are into crypto you forget <laughs> 